Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Well, wonderful to see everybody here today, and thank you all very much for coming. Thank you all very much. Uh, we're, now, we're now, as you know, less than three weeks away from the most critical election of modern memory, when the stakes for this country have seldom been higher and the choice has never been starker. Because in the last few days, we've heard from every other party, haven't we? Uh, they've launched their manifestos, and we have heard how they would keep us stuck in the same rut, how they would consign this country to yet more delay and yet more frustration and parliamentary paralysis, and how they would refuse yet again to honour the will of the people, how they would refuse every other party to get Brexit done. The Lib Dems want to revoke Brexit. The Scots Nationalists want to cancel Brexit and have another referendum on Scotland as well. As for Labour, as for Labour, they'll plainly give in to Nicola Sturgeon and waste the whole of next year in two more referendums, one on Scotland and one on the EU. Except that Jeremy Corbyn won't tell us whether he would even be willing to advise people to vote in favour of his own deal. <laughs> he used to be indecisive. Now he's not so sure. <laughs> do we want... Do we want... Do we want that... Do we want that kind of leadership, my friends? Do we want more delay? Do we want more dither and drift and deadlock and division? Do we want 2020 to be another year of defeatism and despair? No, we don't. We want to move forward because this country has an incredible future. And, and here, here it is, I believe, as at least the partial blueprint for that future. Here is the, here is the route map to take us forward. Because unlike any other party standing at this election, we're going to get Brexit done. With, with a deal that is pre-cooked, ready to go, oven ready, as I keep saying, uh, approved not just by our friends in the EU, but by every single one of the 635 Conservative candidates standing at this election. A deal that will allow us to deliver absolutely all the opportunities of Brexit, from free ports to free trade, to cutting VAT on sanitary products, improving the welfare of animals. Get Brexit done, and we can restore confidence and certainty to business and to families. Get Brexit done and we'll see a pent-up tidal wave of investment into this country. Get Brexit done and we can focus our hearts and our minds on the priorities of the British people. Because it is this one nation Tory party that is already embarked on the biggest cash boost for the NHS for a generation. And today, in this manifesto, we pledge 50,000 more nurses and their bursaries, and 50 million more GP surgery appointments. And today, we make this guarantee to the British people that we will tackle crime with 20,000 more police officers and tougher sentencing, and that we will sort out our immigration system with a points-based Australian-style system, that we will invest millions more every week in science, in schools, in apprenticeships, and in infrastructure, and control our debt at the same time, and that we can reach and we will reach net zero by 2050 with clean energy solutions. And we can do all these things, we can do all these things, here's the kicker, here's the ready book, we can do all these things without raising our income tax, VAT or national insurance contributions. That's our guarantee. And in this manifesto, and in this manifesto, there is a vision for the future. There is a vision for the future of this country in which we unite our amazing country and level up across the country with infrastructure, education, and technology. And it's appropriate, though, of course, that we're here in Telford because it was here or, or hereabouts uh, more than 200 years ago that the Phlegathontian fires of Colebrook Dale created the first industrial revolution. And this whole region was a giant crucible in which colossal quantities of hydrocarbons were burnt to smelt iron and steel and to turn water into steam and power. And it's an incredible thing that here once again in the West Midlands, 
a new industrial revolution is taking place. Not by burning coal, not by emitting CO2, but thanks to British ingenuity, we can make electrons swoosh so efficiently from anode to the cathode, I think. <laughs> or possibly vice versa, but that's, that's, a, that's the right idea. <laughs> that after decades of trying to make electric cars, we can now do it, and we can make electric buses, and, as, and it won't be long before we will be making electric or part electric planes. And we in this One Nation Conservative government don't want to wait for this future because we believe that after three and a half years of being held back by a broken parliament, it is time to unleash the potential of the whole country and to forge a new Britain. And yes, I'm proud that we have in our national capital the greatest city on earth, but I know, and every survey confirms, that genius, talent, ability, flair, are all distributed evenly throughout the United Kingdom. Opportunity is not distributed evenly. And I believe passionately that with education, infrastructure, and technology, we can tackle that unfairness, we can unleash the potential of this whole country, and we can make those investments precisely because we One Nation Conservatives also support a dynamic market economy. And that's why we're cutting taxes for small businesses and uh, why when people get up at the crack of dawn to prepare their family business and when people take out a mortgage to fund a new venture or when they risk everything on a new product or trying to find a new market, we don't sneer at them, we cheer for them. And that is the choice. That is the choice at this election. That is the choice between out-and-out -out retrograde and destructive socialism and sensible one-nation conservatism. You can come with us and have a government that backs our armed forces as a power for good around the world, or you can have Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party who say they want to scrap them. We can support our police, putting more of them on the street, support them in fighting knife crime. They say stop and search is inappropriate and oppressive. We want higher wages, and we're raising the living wage by the biggest ever increase. Corbynomics, McDonaldomics, <laughs> means higher taxes for everybody in this country, £2,400 extra. We stand, up, we stand up for the people of this country when other nations threaten us with harm. And it was quite incredible that when Russia ordered the Salisbury poisonings, Corbyn actually seemed to take the side of, of Moscow. Above all, above all, and here's the, the most important difference we face in the next few days, we will get Brexit done and we will end the acrimony and the chaos, whereas they want to rip up our deal and negotiate a new one. But we don't yet know of a single Labour MP, or indeed any other MP, who would support this deal. In fact, we don't even know if anybody believes in Mr Corbyn's new deal, apart from Mr Corbyn. And not even he believes in it. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine the negotiations uh, that would take place if, if, if this, the Corbyn-Sturgeon coalition were to come in? What on earth are they supposed to think in Brussels? Bonjour, Monsieur Corbyn. <laughs> Comment allez-vous? <laughs> Tell us about this deal that you want. What do you mean? <laughs> you, you don't really want it? <laughs> what do you mean you, you don't really believe in it? You're not going to advocate it. Then who does believe in it? Not Monsieur McDonnell, not Monsieur Stammer, not Madame Abbott. <laughs> then who does believe in it? Who? It will be. It's farcical. It will. It will be farcical. It will be comical if the consequences, if the consequences of that approach were not so disastrous uh, for this country and for our prospects next year. Let's give that madness a miss. I want you to imagine 
what the country could be like in just 10 years' time if we could get a working majority on the 12th of December. I want you to look forward to a Britain where the streets are safer, where the air is cleaner, where we've built 40 new hospitals as a direct result of the decisions taken in the last three months. A Britain where 10-year-olds are not only doing better at reading and writing and maths, but better across the whole country. And where in 10 years' time, scientists are starting to reap the huge rewards from our plans to double spending on research, from AI, artificial intelligence, to the, the gigafactory for batteries that we will inaugurate, to new spaceports in Cornwall and Scotland that will send British-made satellites into the heavens and drive one of our most exciting industries. A Britain where we are uniting and levelling up, where great new infrastructure is helping to rebalance the economy, delivering not just northern powerhouse rail and a metro-style system for the whole of the West Midlands, a Britain where left-behind towns have recovered their vibrancy and their commercial life and optimism, with shops and businesses made possible by better transport and fantastic broadband. And then in turn, where better infrastructure is allowing us, better transport is allowing us to build tens of thousands of superb new homes, hundreds of thousands, on brownfield sites, giving young people the prospect of home ownership that they currently don't have, and which every survey shows is what people in this country want. A Britain where the landscape is made more beautiful by the planting of millions of trees that will also help us to deal with climate change. And in 10 years' time, I confidently prophesy that people will be passionately proud of their Scottish identity and their wealth, Welsh and Northern Irish, and yes, their English identity. And that will be a great thing. But we will also all be citizens of a proud, strong, and whole United Kingdom. Yeah. More united. Yeah. More, more united than ever. Flying that red, white, and blue union flag that represents the best of our values from democracy and the rule of law, from free trade to free speech to the freedom to love whomsoever you choose, from championing 12 years of quality education for every girl in the world to protecting the planet's wildlife from the tragedy of habitat loss and extinction. And a Britain that is able to lead the world, as we do, in tackling climate change and reducing our CO2, as I say, to net zero by 2050, not because we hate capitalism and want to destroy it, and want pointlessly to make an enemy of enterprise, but because the private sector makes the brilliant technical breakthroughs that enable us to cut CO2 and pay for great public services and create great high-skilled jobs. And that is the vision that we are offering, to make this country the greatest place to live, to breathe, to be, to raise kids, to start a business, the greatest place on earth. And I propose, that, isn't that our vision? I propose that we get on with it now. I don't want to waste, I don't want to waste 2020 in two more referendums. I want it to be an exciting and productive year, a year of prosperity and growth. Do you want to wake up on Friday the 13th of December and find a nightmare on Downing Street? A, a, Corbyn, a Corbyn Sturgeon coalition of chaos? I say, let's go carbon neutral by 2050 and Corbyn neutral by Christmas. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, Margaret. Let's go for sensible, moderate, but tax-cutting, one-nation, conservative government and take this country forwards. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. I'm, I, we're going we're to take some, some questions for the, from the media now. And I'm going to go first to, uh, to Robert Peston of ITV, if he's here. Robert. Mr. Johnson, um, you're proposing three billion a year of extra public service spending compared to Labour's promise of 83 billion pounds a year. Equally, you are proposing eight billion pounds a year of increased investment compared to 80 billion pounds a year proposed by Jeremy Corbyn. So anybody who wants to see a definitive end to austerity, improvements in public services, they're going to vote for Labour, aren't they? Uh, well, Robert, I, I couldn't uh, disagree with you more because if you look at this agenda, it is a radical agenda. It is a, this is a new Conservative government. We're not only, we're, by, by uh, 2023, you will see as a result of the decision we're making a 29% increase in spending just on the NHS. The funding we're putting into the NHS, uh, which we will begin, uh, and we will continue as soon as we're back in Downing Street. If I'm lucky enough to be back in Downing Street, uh, on, uh, in, 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 in December, we will be investing, as I say, the biggest ever cash boost to the NHS. 50,000 more nurses, 50 million more GP appointments, and uh, we're bringing back the bursary for nurses as well. I believe absolutely passionately that it's our job as One Nation Conservatives to support a step change in funding of our great public services, particularly uh, the NHS, and that is what we are going to do. And yes, of course, uh, it is true uh, that we're doing it in a sensible uh, way, and we're making big commitments now. We're making big commitments over the lifetime of the Parliament, and particularly on uh, public services and infrastructure, but we can only do that because we manage the economy sensibly and we have a dynamic and growing economy. And I'm sorry to say, I, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm, sorry to, I'm sorry to say that some of the spending commitments I've seen from uh, Mr. Corbyn and the, and the Labour Party, really, uh, I think they, they staggered even uh, some of his most left-wing uh, supporters. And uh, they, they, would, they would put up uh, spending to 1.2 trillion, you'd have a tax bill for every, uh, every person in the country of, uh, every taxpayer in the country of 2,400 pounds. And what I think people need to understand is that at this crucial moment, we're able to make big investments in our infrastructure, make big uh, commitments because we've got interest rates low. And when the markets look at commitments of the scale uh, that Labour is making, I'm afraid they will mark us down. And they will say to this country, uh, you can't have interest rates that low. And that will mean the mortgages go up uh, for everybody in addition in addition to people's tax burden. I, I never forget, folks, that whenever Labour has left office, they've left the public finances in ruins. It was true last time. It's always true throughout history. And unemployment, <laughs> unemployment, un, unemployment uh, always ends under a Labour government higher than uh, when they began. Uh, all Labour governments end uh, with an economic crisis. The only difference with uh, Corbyn and Macdonald is, as far as I can see, they propose to start with an economic <laughs> crisis uh, and, and, make it, and make it worse. Um, and, and, and never forget that they would miss the golden opportunity to get Brexit done because that is what is really going to lift the inertia and uncertainty from our economy next year, get it motoring in the way that, they, uh, that, that we want, and uh, they would squander that year in yet another referendum on the EU and another one on Scotland, which would not, not only be politically and democratically damaging, but economically disastrous as well. So uh, next, please, uh, Laura Koonsberg from the BBC. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Um, you won the leadership of your party by making a big promise on Brexit that you then broke, despite saying the buck stopped with you. Now you're trying to win the country with a whole list of promises and significant extra spending. Do you accept that beyond this room and beyond your party, it's a big leap of faith for the country to trust you with a majority? Well, uh, Laura, obviously we're working very hard uh, to secure a working uh, majority because uh, and, and get a parliament that works for the people of this country, because I think that when, yes, it's perfectly true that uh, Parliament did vote to stop us uh, from leaving uh, the European Union in the way that uh, I wanted on October the 31st. That was the decision taken by 
Mr. Corbyn, uh, Joe Swinson, the, the Scottish nationalists, they, they decided to, to vote against our, our plan to come out. We have a, a great deal to, to do that now. And, you know, I, I think the biggest issue at this election is really whether people have any confidence in politics anymore. And I think the reason that confidence and trust in politics has been so undermined is because for three and a half years, they've seen politicians engaged in constant uh, prevarication, procrastination, dither and delay when the people of this country voted to get Brexit done. And we are the only, we are the only party. We're the only party, we're the only party at this election that has a prospectus to do, to do that. We've got a deal uh, that I say, as I say, is, is ready to go. Uh, let's, get, let's get on and do it. And that, I think, is the way to bring our country together and to enable us all to focus on the priorities that we care about, particularly uh, the NHS. Uh, Beth Rigby, Sky. Um, thank you, Prime Minister. I just want to pick up on the issue of trust and trust being undermined because aren't you part of the problem in the leadership race you promised an income tax cut for higher earners now dropped from the manifesto you always also promised do or die to leave the eu on october the 31st when you didn't have the majority in parliament to deliver on that promise three times the conservative party extended article 50 voters laughed at you in two recent television performances when you said that truth in politics is important. Do you understand why many people simply don't trust you? Well, you. Uh, I have to say, Beth, that you know, I repeat my, my point. I, I was absolutely determined to uh, come out on October the 31st and people were amazed. Uh, all the skeptics and the, and the critics were turned out to be totally wrong. They said, they said that we wouldn't get a, a deal uh, we wouldn't be able to change the withdrawal agreement, and we did. I, I, I was absolutely confident we would be able to do that. Actually, what happened, if you remember, was that Parliament uh, decided uh, to uh, give a first approval uh, to that withdrawal agreement, which you know, everybody said was impossible, and they then senselessly voted to extend yet again. And I, I'm afraid that it was, it was Parliament that passed that law, uh, and I think it was a great mistake. Uh, on your point about, uh, and that we need, that is why I'm afraid we do need to fix this broken parliament, uh, get a working majority, and get that deal over the line. It's a, it's a, it's a great deal. It enables us to do everything uh, that we want, and I, I hope that, the, the, that we can get on and do it. And I also hope that we can get on and, uh, with, with our new parliament, because we do want to do some great things to help people on taxation. Yes, it's true that uh, we are not uh, prioritizing uh, tax cuts for uh, the high earners at the moment. We are looking, uh, of course, at the moment to, to do what we can to help people with the cost of living. And that's why we're lifting up the living wage by the biggest ever amount. That's also why we're cutting national insurance contributions. And, uh, you, you, and look at the difference between us and the, the Labour Party, uh, who, who is the only other potential uh, Prime Minister, I'm afraid, at this election is Jeremy Corbyn, supported by Nicola Sturgeon. And uh, Every independent analysis I have seen suggests that his pledges, which are being uh, added to every day, would lead to massive tax increases for people across this country. We're cutting taxes, managing things sensibly, putting huge investments now into the NHS and into public services. We will continue to do that throughout this parliament. Uh, Nick Humphreys from the Shropshire Star. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Johnson. Sir. Um, when Jeremy Corbyn came to Telford recently, um, he pledged to save the A&E uh, in Telford. Uh, it's one of the primary concerns for people in our patch. Um, what's your response to that? Well, thank you, Nick. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at Matt Hancock here because I know that, he's, he, that we have... Uh, kept the A&E open, and we will ensure that it is open, and I will absolutely insist on that, and uh, I, I know that Matt will be uh, very happy to give you uh, more details about that afterwards, but we will certainly make sure the A&E in Telford uh, is kept open. Um,
uh, and by the way, we can, we, as, to, to repeat my final point, we can only do that because we run a, a strong and dynamic economy. And if we want to make long-term funding in the uh, commitments to the NHS, which we passionately do, we have to continue to uh, run the economy sensibly and not go after uh, wealth creators as though they were somehow enemies of, of, of this country. They're, 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 you know, people who run businesses, people who get up early to get their shops ready, they, they, are, they are doing a fine thing. We should be, we should be supporting them. Okay. Uh, Tom Newton Dunn of The Sun. Thank you, Prime Minister. There's no mention of maintaining troop levels in this manifesto as there was in your party's 2015-2017 manifesto. Are you going to cut troop numbers? Will you put no, us here no, and now? No, no, no. Thank you, though. For, Great. Uh, On to my second question, then, oh, in which right. case. <laughs> no, well, Tom, let, let, me just, let me just elaborate my first answer, but, but, but go on. Do you have your second question? Go on. Uh, you, uh, under your fiscal rules, uh, if I got this right, the deficit can and almost only will rise in every single year of the next parliament, so I just wondered what happened to the party of fiscal credibility. No, uh, well, uh, I, I think, first of all, on the, on the, on the armed services, as, as I uh, made clear repeatedly, we will, uh, we will not be cutting our, our armed services in any form. We will be maintaining the size of our armed services, and I'm delighted to see Secretary of State for Defence nodding uh, fervently in the, fr in the front row, uh, and that's because we are increasing funding for our armed services. Uh, we are maintaining our NATO uh, two percent commitment, uh, and more, and actually we're going to be increasing uh, our, our funding uh, by 0.5% above uh, inflation every year of this parliament, because we believe in our armed services. I mean, I've, I've travelled around the world, and um, they, are, they are loved. The armed services of the United Kingdom... The armed, services of, of the armed services of the United Kingdom are perhaps the most admired uh, export uh, that this country has in some parts of the world, and they do a fantastic amount of, of good. And, and I think that our attitude of supporting, supporting our armed services, uh, protecting veterans, uh, Tom, from uh, vexatious uh, cases against them uh, that have happened long ago when no new evidence has been produced, Helping, helping military families with the cost of, of childcare. Uh, our attitude is to support and to protect our, our armed forces, and I contrast that uh, with Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party. Uh, I think a lot, Mr Corbyn has at various times said that he would disband our, our armed forces and cannot envisage the circumstances in which he would want to use them. Uh, so uh, there is a, 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 sharp, uh, contra, a sharp distinction uh, there. And on your, on your point about uh, fiscal discipline and prudence, we, we are maintaining fiscal discipline, but this is, uh, and, we, and we will, and we will keep debt uh, coming down. But you are, you know, and you, know, you heard that you, I was attacked from the other end of the spectrum just now by, well not attacked, but um, you know, invited to comment from the other end of the spectrum uh, uh, by, by Robert. And, uh, and you know, uh, we, we are doing this sensibly. This is a new government. It's a very active government. It's a very dynamic and positive government. We believe passionately in the future of our country and its ability to do great things. Uh, we think now is the time to invest in our public services, in education, in the NHS, and in infrastructure, but to do it in a way that maintains the long-term uh, uh, prosperity of the UK economy. And that is what we will, that is what we will do. Uh, Gordon Rayner, Daily Telegraph. Uh, thank you, Prime Minister. Um, during the leadership campaign, you made a very eye-catching pledge to uh, raise the higher rate of income tax from yes. uh, 50,000 to 80,000, the threshold. Uh, you've now dropped that. Are you taking uh, traditional Tory voters for granted? And if not, is there anything you can offer them beyond what's in the manifesto? And just secondly, a quick question. Can you set a date on when Britain will leave the EU? Uh, well, thank you, Gordon. Uh, first of all, um, I haven't lost any of my uh, tax-cutting zeal, uh, just, just, just so you know. And when I was uh, running London, we, we cut our share of council tax. I believe in cutting taxes where you can, and that's why we're cutting taxes on national insurance, which, by the way, helps everybody uh, in, the, in the country, uh, every, every taxpayer in the country. That's why we've raised the, uh, the, the personal allowance. Uh, we believe in, in cutting taxes. But I think at this particular juncture, uh, when uh, people, as a result of the economic disaster left by the last Labour government, when people have been going through some quite tough times and when people want to see spending on the NHS now, 
I think it is right to focus our tax cuts on people uh, who need them most. And I hope you will agree with that. That, 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 that doesn't by any means... And yes, of course, yes, of course, we're cutting taxes. And we're, we're cutting taxes on, uh, on, on SMEs, on businesses, on, uh, on cutting business rates on the high street uh, to stimulate uh, growth and employment, because that's also uh, the right thing to do. Because we're, we're, as I say, we're a party that believes in, in, a, in driving a dynamic economy. Uh, and that is, that is the way forward. And uh, Gordon, you asked another question, which is momentarily uh, on the day, of the, well, I, let me, let's be clear. Uh, as soon as, if, if we're lucky enough to be returned with a working majority uh, on December the 12th, December the 13th, then uh, we, as I say, we have this deal ready to go. It is, it is, you know, just add water. Uh, put it, it's, it's, it's there. Uh, we can, we, we can then get the whole thing completed in a matter of uh, days, if not weeks, and we're out by January the 31st. And I, and I, and I, I, can, I, can, I compare, I can, I can trust that. I can trust that. And I can trust that with the, with the miserable, the miserable, uh, lackadaisical uh, timetable of, the, uh, of, the, of Mr. Corbyn, who would uh, have a, a, another negotiation for another three months, then a six-month uh, referendum campaign. Uh, uh, you know, I, I've, I've made the point already about the, the great vacuity, the nullity, the vast inanition at the heart of his policy on Brexit. We still don't know what he'd even try to achieve uh, through this uh, second referendum, this second deal, apart from dither, delay, more uncertainty, uh, at the cost of the whole UK economy. Uh, so we'll get it done. Uh, we'll get it done in just a few weeks' time. Uh, Jason Groves, Daily Mail. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, a few months ago on the steps of Downing Street, you said you had a plan to solve the long-term crisis in social care. There's no sign of that in this manifesto. There's a bit of money to uh, stop the system falling over and some warm words about the future. But we've had a long line of PMs who talked big on this and ended up bottling it. I mean, are you going to join them or can you give us a cast iron guarantee today that by the end of the next parliament, you will have in place a long-term yes. system, not yeah. just a sticky yeah. plaster. Yeah, no, look, I mean, Jason, since, since um, this, government, this new government came into office, we've, we've allocated about one and a half billion towards addressing the, the, the social care issue, both for adult and child social care and, and, and helping uh, local councils with the, the, the huge pressures that they face. We're going to put another billion every year in the life of the parliament into fixing that. But what we're also going to do is do what I think people in this country would expect us to do, which is to build on what I think is a growing national consensus about the way forward. And uh, we will reach out across party, you know, and we'll be optimistic in, our, in, in the way that we do that, uh, try to bring people together, and uh, we will have a long-term plan that achieves two things. First of all, ensures that everybody has dignity and security in their old age, and secondly, that nobody, nobody has to sell their home to pay for the cost of their care. And that is... That will be our policy, and that is the right way forward uh, for this country. I'm going to go to Rowena Mason from the, from the Guardian, if she's here, Rowena. Rowena Mason from the Guardian. Um, can I ask about uh, the Conservative Party's decision to change its online Twitter feed to, uh, to fact-checking UK um, as an example of uh, that's been it's been accused of being fake news? Um, does that undermine trust in the Conservative Party? Um, well, Rowena, I'm afraid that the, uh, the the Twitter sphere is not really my uh, my province. Uh, but I what I what I can say is that um, I'm, I'm informed that. Um, the, the, the Labour have some sort of operation which is uh, very similar to this. But um, what I, what I, you know, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I haven't followed this this Twitter stuff with perhaps the attention that, that you would like, Rowena. Um, I, will, I will, I will, I will apprise myself of the of the detail of this. But you know, when it comes to, um, as I say, when it comes to trust in politics and uh, and and the facts of this election. 
There, what we need to know, there is one giant fact that, which we continue to, to chase down. There is one elusive, like the, the hunting of the, of the snark or, 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 the, or the, the quest for the answer to Fermat's last theorem or the riddle of the Sphinx or the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, we still, the, 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 the one fact, uh, the one that we wish to discover, the one hard crouton of fact that we search for in the great minestrone of, of Labour's policy on Brexit is what is the position of the leader of the Labour Party on whether he wants to come out of the European Union. And I, and I have to say, uh, if you cannot answer, if you cannot supply a fact like that at this stage with, uh, with barely 18 days to go before polls open, I do not see how you can credibly take this country forward uh, next year or credibly get a deal uh, with the European Union. That is the, that is the issue. We don't know. You know Rowena, Rowena, the mystery continues to deepen. And I, I invite you to, I invite and, uh, all wonderful colleagues in the media to, to redouble their efforts, to uh, send out search parties, to, to, to find this, this elusive, this, this like Shergar, uh, this, <laughs> this, 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 this fact that I think a, a great deal depends on members of the public would be, would be fascinated to know. Because unless we know that fact, it is very, very hard to make sense of anything that Labour says about their plans for next year. Listen, everybody, thank you all very much. I, 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 want, to I want to say uh, this, is, this is going to be a, a very, very important election. It's going to be a very, very close fought, a very, very close fought election. And we must, we must contest every seat and campaign for every vote and make our case uh, respectfully and humbly to every, elect uh, every elector. Uh, that what we want to do, and I think you, you, you've heard it from me already, but what we want to do is very, very simple. We want to honour the democratic processes of this country. We want to do that because it's the right thing in itself, but it's also right for our country and for our economy now, because we want to focus on the priorities of the British people, above all the NHS and the cost of living. We want to get Brexit done and unleash the potential of this whole country. Thank you all very much. Thanks, everybody.